Welcome back to another Nano video. Now on September 1st, Nvidia is set to announce their GeForce RTX 30 series graphics card, which will be using the new Ampere architecture. These cards should bring even more performance than their current gaming champion, the RTX 2080 Ti, while also providing improvements to ray tracing performance, as well as a certain set of new features. Luckily for us, their specs got leaked online by videocards.com. So let's go right ahead and have a look at the specs. Specs. First up is the biggest card, which is the RTX 3090. That's what it's going to be called. And this card will have 5,248 CUDA cores, 24 gigabytes of 19 and a half gigabit per second GDDR6X memory, a total graphics power of 350 watts, and a boost clock of 1725 megahertz. Now, the GPU used here will be a GA102 die, which is said to be built on a 7 nanometer process. Now, whether that's TSMC or Samsung 7 nanometer is not yet known, but I'm sure when Jensen comes up on stage, we'll know a little bit more on that. Now the next card is the RTX 3080 and this is going to have 4,352 CUDA cores and 10 gigabytes of 19 gigabit per second GDDR6X memory and a total graphics power of 320 watts as well as a boost clock of 1740 megahertz. Now the GPU used here will also be a GA102 die except this time of course cut down. Now the last card is the RTX 3070. Now video cards did put out some specifications on it, however they're largely incomplete, but it's said to feature 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running at 16 gigabit per second, as well as having a total graphics power of 220 watts, but really any of that information could change because it's just way too early to really speak about it, but supposedly that's some of the specs. Now, from this information, it's looking like NVIDIA is launching with the two largest cards this generation first, and then they're going to slowly roll out the other cards down the stack, like the 3070, the 3060, and the 3050, etc., etc. Now, there's also some images from videocards.com showing the new card designs by some add-in board partners like Gainwood and Zotac. Uh, I'm not going to feature them in the video as I'm a bit afraid that it'll get the video taken down, but I'll put that link in the description. Now, from the looks of it, most of these graphics cards that are 3090 designs are sporting either two or three 8-pin connectors. So, yeah, that 350 watts probably true. I mean, these cards are definitely going to pull a lot of power, and that's really a stark difference to the 2080 Ti, which ran at around about 250 watts. So if you have a smaller power supply, around about 500 to 600 watts, uh, and you plan on getting these two mammoth GPUs, I think you got to upgrade your power supply. Speaking of mammoth GPUs, the GA102 die is estimated to be around about 627 millimeters squared, and it features 34.5 billion transistors. This is all according to leaker Kitty Corky on Twitter, and he's actually posted some pretty legit information as well. So I'm gonna have to say that that's probably true, and that's really large for a seven nanometer chip. And because of that, it's probably gonna be very expensive to produce. So I would expect high pricing for these graphics cards. And we're gonna talk about pricing in a little bit, but now it's to go to the performance rumors. It's hard to really say when it comes to performance rumors, but copite 7 Kimi, who is really the most accurate leaker on Twitter that I've seen when it comes to these cards. He pretty much got the CUDA core amounts and everything else really, really early. But he said that in Time Spy Extreme, the RTX 3090 reached scores of 10,000 points and the RTX 3080 reached scores in the 8500 range. So when you compare that to an RTX 2080 Ti, the 3080 was scoring around about 32% faster and the 3090 was scoring around about 56% faster. So that's really what you would expect from a generational increase. And it's been two years since Turing came out. So this is definitely a welcome increase in performance. Now, Kitty Corgi as well also said on Twitter that the Times by Extreme benchmark doesn't really 
really allow for Ampere cards to truly flex their muscles and that we might need some sort of new benchmarks to either support new features or show the true performance of the Ampere architecture. And when we're looking at new features, something popped up earlier today, which I think is a welcome feature and that's supposedly DLSS 2.1. So currently uh, DLSS 2.0 has been implemented in a bunch of games. The, the latest one I think was Death Stranding. I think that's the name of the game. Apparently DLSS 2.1 is coming and the reason that we know that is that there was a Steam DB page of Wolfenstein Youngblood and it showed a testing branch or a dev branch that actually had the label DLSS 2.1. So it looks like there's a version of DLSS that's coming, a new version. We don't know what it's going to provide, whether it's just an increase in performance or if it's actually an increase in image clarity or maybe both, but certainly a new version of DLSS is on the horizon. Now, the very last thing that we're going to talk about is pricing. Now, I just want to be very careful when I talk about pricing because a lot of people hear a price and then they think, oh, that's definitely going to be the price. But pricing can really change at any moment. You know, pricing could change before Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, goes up on stage. So I would definitely take pricing with a pinch of salt, especially any rumor. But Garnet Sunset, who showed a picture of the 3090 Founders Edition card on Twitter next to an RTX 2080 Ti card, said that the 3090 was estimated to be around about 1,400 US dollars with the 3080 being around about $800. Now I expect pricing to change and like I said, just take it with a pinch of salt, but really anything could happen, but that is a very expensive price for a GPU. So tell me, are you guys excited for the RTX 30 series graphics cards? Are you going to be buying a 3090 or a 3080? Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. Hit that bell and subscribe to the channel for more info. And we'll have a review out for these cards very soon when they release. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.